Well, I think the, 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 the biggest challenge is that it's a completely new agenda, actually. I think we were all uh, kind of subdividing the world into a rich and a poor part, and the rich uh, part was helping the poor. And I think uh, many development organizations, but also the UN system, actually, in, in, in large parts, is actually functioning like this. I think it's a very good way to function. This has been reflected very strongly uh, by the uh, Millennium Development Goals again. But the SDG agenda is a new one, actually. I mean, just saying that every country is a developing country uh, is something very new and I think is a completely new challenge to, to the UN system. So I think we really need to, to reconfigure ourselves, not only the UN system, I think, for example, also development research and so on. Uh, it's one of the many challenges. I can just compliment on this. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is implementation. Uh, we've had a, a lot of um, uh, reform and reform debates uh, before. We've had we've had plenty of uh, of initiatives coming out of the of the UN, uh, but but implementing them has not always gone that easy. And especially uh, in in a, in a world where today we see a lot of yeah how how to call it. <laughs> reinvented nationalism coming up. Um, this, this is, I think, one of the main challenges to, to keep this system running, to keep um, having these uh, initiatives implemented uh, to strive to a better world, but, but to, to at the same time also cope with this renewed nationalism. I think you have an advantage with a, with a university even even if this university is not the type of university that we normally know, uh, that we work with, uh, with young people also. And uh, at least the idea is to also have the, the uh, research and the findings travel through the young people. Um, and, and I think you have a, a chance of, of realizing certain goals if you have a group of young people, young scholars, uh, behind it. So I think the, the importance is, is, is quite relevant, not only on that part, of course. Uh, getting the facts right is something else. But as you say, we live in a world where we're, we're listed in, in a post-fact world. So stressing on the facts today uh, is, albeit necessary, not always as productive. We, we know today that there's truths and alternative truths, and the people kind of believe what they want to believe. Uh, so uh, it's not because you have the facts that, that uh, those facts are taken into account in policy making and so forth. And that's the challenge and that's the, the, the role that uh, a more independent university like UN University has in projecting those uh, facts, uh, but also seeing to it that these facts are being heard. And if, if I can add a bit on this, I think especially in a post-truth world, uh, institutions like you and you should look for and speak for truth, but we need to do it in a way that can be understood by non-academics. This is what uh, where politics is bad at, the UN is bad at, and I think also academia is bad at. Uh, I think by creating truth, uh, uh, sorry, by creating truth, by, 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 by creating trust, I wanted to say, <laughs> it's both, <laughs> looking for creating truth and Creating truth is something different, yes, right? this is different, <laughs> yes, this is what people are trying to do now, but by creating trust. And this is a, a long-term a, a long process which needs a lot, a lot of energy. And uh, UNU is a small institution, so I think we should be selective. I think we shouldn't try to do everything uh, uh, which would need to be done. Uh, but building up, uh, even if selective, good relationships actually, really trying to kind of find answers uh, to questions people have. And I think especially, uh, and also if they are not directly related to fundamental attractive research. I think part of uh, creating trust and part of uh, building bridges also involves uh, work that it is not research per se, I think. And this is where we have, I think, our big freedom. Academic normal universities sometimes don't have it. They have to maximize the number of papers. I don't think we need to strive for it. I think we must be optimistic in the sense that um, if, if you have a, a big challenge like this to strive for, uh, you must strive for it in a, in a positive way. Otherwise, the thing is dead before you even started it. 
So I think we have the, the duty to, to be optimistic. Of course, having said that, we also must be realistic uh, in, in uh, tackling those things that we can tackle and, and not going beyond what we can't reach. Uh, and in that, I, I follow the line uh, that, that uh, we have to be selective, especially if we look at, at you and you, then we have to be selective in what we, what we look at and what we do. But what we do, we should do for a broad audience, not for a very selective club on the one hand, and on the other hand, the research findings should be translated in such a way that the politicians can pick it up relatively easily. Yeah, I, it depends a bit what you mean by achieving. If you mean uh, ticking off uh, all the 169 goals actually and say that they have been reached by 100%, then I'm afraid not. I think there will be some goals, hopefully some of them may be even overachieved, other may be not quite achieved, but I think what the agenda should do and does at, the, at its minimum is to create a kind of what as a physicist I would call a force field actually to kind of I mean I think even even the agreement actually the 190 uh, member states could reach on this agenda I think it's uh, not self understood I think this already is a great achievement and I think starts to put uh, member states under pressure actually to to achieve at least some of some of the goals I think maybe they are starting very selectively but I think I think it creates emotion and even if you don't achieve a goal I mean many of the uh, of the Millennium Development Goals haven't been achieved but you know it brutally that they haven't been achieved and I think this is an input actually for future programs as I said at the beginning it's the implementation that will count mm -hmm. and it's uh uh, we're, we're far from implementing everything. I mean, the, the eventual goal is world peace, right? Uh, uh, no, no more uh, wars and, and, and uh, uh, wealth and happiness to all. It, it's a difficult one to achieve, but we can always get little steps to get towards it. And I think those little steps, even if they're little, they're very important.